with Sand and Plebs, we're here at Euros 2016 and this is our boy Joshua Schmidt who just got top 16 at the at the yeah Euros so we're here with your uh, pendulum deck yep um, so why did you decide on this build or this deck even all together um, I think pendulum is the only deck that can consistently go through a few of the monarchs NBA which is like the most played decks and um, it's also the only deck that can realistically win uh, going second unless you, you're retarded and play Ariadne, shout out to Norman and Temis um, <laughs> and Ali. But yeah, I mean, it's a really good deck. It's kind of unusual for me, usually I just play what is like, what, what everyone thinks to be the best deck, but this time in like Monarch and uh, BA format, it's a little bit different. Uh, I lost in top 16, the whole match had two turns, like game one I, I died in one turn, game two I died in one turn, so that feels good. That's a bit weird. Um, weird. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, it's, it's rough to say, but like, it, it feels really bad. It's like, I think that's the, the roughest loss I've ever had, because ever since like 2012, the only thing I wanted to do in this game was go back to Worlds, and like, it just got destroyed in like five minutes. So, yeah. yeah. Oh well. But uh, someone special helped you with the deck, right? Uh, well, I, I, no, no, actually not. <laughs> we'll get to that later when, when I, yeah. Okay, cool, let's see your list. So like, the, the reason to play the deck is this card. Like it's it beats BA alone, uh, and it's also really good against monarchs. Uh, you also play three of that. Uh, just get bricky from time to time, but the most important thing is that you do open up this, so you just max out on that. Um, yeah, uh, three odd dice. Uh, I run three because it is like the main damage dealer of the deck. It's one of the cards that. Um, you put the pressure on your opponent with that and like the uh, unicorn pushes and you always want to resolve it first turn because if you resolve that it's like a lot of pressure on your opponent you're going to get the monkey board off out of your deck or the Bunruku if you don't have it yet and um, like the 2500 beater in the extra deck is just is such a good resource so um, when you have it you can just use your searches on something else and if you don't have it you want to draw you want to search it anyway so I figured three was a good way to go um, and yeah, so like, yeah, it's really good. Um, three abductor because you auto win if you open abductor and terraforming is like really good. Uh, you don't have many other ways to trigger abductor. Like if you don't have terraforming or sky Iris, you usually won't be able to search with it for uh, pendulum monster. Uh, you still you can still search Veiler. I do run one Veiler, so sometimes when I don't have terraforming or Iris, I can still grab the Veiler. Uh, but like overall, like, it's just so amazing. If you open, I've never lost a game where I opened abductor with Iris or terraforming. Uh, I do run three Pendulum Sorcerer. Um, I'm aware that like most people are not playing this in like Magician Kareen versions of that, but I, I just think it's like retarded not to play this card. It's the best Pendulum Synergy card. It has a very good scale, very good scale effect for the late game. Uh, I don't I don't have that many targets. I'll show you in a minute. But it's like you you resolve it once first turn and afterwards you set up and it's all fine. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's a waste not to play the card. Um, two Unicorn. I was playing three, but I'll explain in a minute why I went down the two. One Phoenix for the Sky Iris and the Joker at the Monkey Board. Uh, I play Lizard Draw because um, Lizard Draw is like the only like you need it in order to search Veiler with Abductor because when you summon Sorcerer and Abductor together, what you want to do is you want to pop both your scales, get like Monkey Board and Lizard Draw, and then Monkey Board is one spell. Lizard draws the second one, Lizard draw destroys itself, and then you just put another scale, like preferably Odd Eyes, there for your end. And this is the third counter for the Veiler search. So um, I was considering dropping Veiler, and then I would have dropped that too. But um, it, it's really helpful because you don't always have Kareen, and the Veiler can be really strong. Uh, two eccentric, like I love the card. I was, I was, I, I would have loved to play three, but it does conflict with all your other high scales. Like you're going first. You draw eccentric and this, one of them is basically useless. Um, it doesn't let you summon odd eyes, it doesn't let you summon apex. Um, so, yeah, uh, two was just fine because you can odd eye search it. Like, you odd eye search it a lot when you're already set up. Um, then I decided to play this little engine just because I was like stuck with the deck at a point where I really liked it and I, I was pretty sure it was the best deck. But it only had like 38 cards, 37 cards that I liked and I just couldn't find something that was good for consistency. Like the only way I lost games was if I just break basically. That was like the, the only... Even though it was a very little amount of games where I break, like I wanted to have more pendulums. 
And so I was like, okay, how about if I find more high scales? And there's no other good high scale in the game, eight scale specifically, next to Unicorn than this. And um, so I went down on two Unicorns and added these. And um, when you play two of these, it's a waste not to play these, simply because this is like, it works with every performer pile is a free plus, and this is also like decent. Um, and because you play Sorcerer in this deck, which usually you don't in other Magician builds, um, whenever you don't use your normal summon, you just summon Sorcerer, and then you still have the Joker for normal summon. So whenever you draw one, you just get the second one, or you auto search this thing when you draw one of these. So like they're really good. Um, and this is actually a good 8 scale to pop with Sorcerer, while you, if you pop Unicorn it doesn't do anything. This is only level 1, so uh, they were really good throughout the tournament. Like, I, I would play these again, definitely. Also not playing Pendulum Call, that kind of shit. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Veiler... It's, it's a good card just format, but you don't want to play multiples just because it's nothing you like want to draw. You wouldn't play it if it wasn't for Abductor, but Abductor plus Sorcerer does come up quite a bit. Uh, one Apex, shoutouts to Desco Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Um, one of random Apex. No, like he was he, like everyone was telling me play two or three of this, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. And uh, I kind of agreed on it. I was like, if you want to play the card, you want to open it and stuff. Uh, so I, and I felt like I could cut it. I actually felt like it was not necessary for the deck to work, and and it's not. Like if you don't draw it, it doesn't matter. So I cut it for testing, and I was stuck on 39 cards. I was I had 39 cards, these right here, which I was really happy with. And I was like, what can I play? So I, I thought, is there anything for consistency? Is there anything else I can play? And I, I just couldn't think of anything. I, there was nothing I liked. So I added this as a 40th card, just because like, if you draw it, it might win you the game. If you don't draw it, you're not like dependent on it. Uh, and it did work out pretty well. I did, I, I, that drew it like once maybe, and it won me like a lot of games where I drew it. So uh, I think it's fine. You, you can try to fit more, but it might hurt consistency as well. I'm not sure if it's worth to try, you would have to like forcefully cut anything else, I'm not sure if that's worth it, so um, I liked it. Hashtag 300. Um, <laughs> Terraformings and Skyris, three each. Um, best card. It, it really is the best card to open with, it makes every hand kind of live unless you have like no pendulums. Uh, it auto wins with Abductor, I do not play any other targets in the main for Terraforming, simply because um, you always want to keep Iris around because it's also like so valuable going into second turn, and um, you were even playing Planet Defender at one point, weren't you? I was I was playing Planet Defender, which is no Planet Pathfinder, which oh, is yeah. like a level four, which you have to normal summon, then you contribute it to search his field spell. So it's like terraforming as a normal summon. That, that that's how good this card is. I was testing that card, um, but uh, six is enough. Like I didn't see it once in top sixteen. I, um, <laughs> I drew three. Copies of terraforming once. In, Only once? Uh, in, um, once. I opened it once and then I drew into the third one in another game. <laughs> but like, yeah. Oh, again, how many did you draw? Four. <laughs> Out of I, five I, cards. When, the, the time I opened three, I drew into another terraforming the next turn. So it, it technically counts as four. <laughs> and I would have won that game if I didn't draw upstart. Like, I, I couldn't kill him because of upstart. I could, I could do like 8,200 damage. But like, yeah, these are super important. Uh, I don't think you need a second one because you don't want to overwrite your iris anyways. Like, Village and Necro Valley are good cards, this format, against certain decks, but you don't know what you're playing game one, so it's not, you're not, you never know if it's worth to terraforming into one of these and just get rid of your iris, because you risk losing the game if they just get rid of your skills, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and drawing multiples of these is not that bad, because you, have, you play Sorcerer in this deck, so, like, you draw two, you just go set terraforming and pop it with Sorcerer, it's fine. Um, uh, I decided to main deck 2 MST simply because the, the trend was going heavily towards um, Domain Monarchs and BAPK was like suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere everyone was maining at least 2 Fragrance and at least 2 Strikes and like Eccentric doesn't do anything against Fragrance and um, it's kind of vulnerable against um, Kuraz, against Monarchs and stuff and it's just like an overall good card, it's good against Pendulum, it's good against Domain Monarchs, it's good against um, BA because li everyone's playing traps in that now. It is better to play traps in Burning Abyss, so yeah, I was expecting that. It's good against um, Demise, it's good against Cosmo. It's uh, It sucks against XYZ Monarch, that's like the only matchup where it's like pretty bad unless you're lucky enough to hit like a crucial domain or a Brilliant Fusion. But yeah, overall, and any combos with Abductor, I did that like twice where you open Abductor but no other spell. So you just go Abductor, Pendulum Scale, one counter, MST your own scale, activate a high scale and then search. Which, it seems terrible if you compare it to like the Iris combo with Abductor, but um, 
it still is a relatively decent turn one if you get a Karine and a Sorcerer to get the stuff like that. So. Um, Autoist Fusion is like super strong. I was about to cut it because I open it a little bit too often in my like, but it, it turns out to be like a really really good card. Um, <laughs> yo, um, yo. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like really, really good. I, I think I resolved it like from the extra deck like once or twice. I resolved it way more often just like... Searching it. Like Especially because this deck has Pendulum Sorcerer. It's like so easy to get like... If you already have Scales and Sorcerer, you just go Iris. And you pop and just grab this. And then you Pendulum Summon Sorcerer. You just grab uh, Joker and uh, Odd Eyes Performer Pile. And just Normal Summon Joker. And then use this to fuse the, the Joker or the, the, the Sorcerer into one from your hand. It's like... It's, and Vortex is super good, so like, if, you, if you ever have like a combination of uh, like Vortex together with like Apex, Kirin, or Valor, or Dweller against certain matchups, it's like super solid. Um, this thing, and this one Ignite Reload, uh, it's a card I really like simply because like drawing multiples of any scale is like kind of weird. And it's basically like a little mulligan, you know, you, you look at your hand, you're like, okay, I have two of this scale, I can replace it and try to get to Iris, to Sorcerer, to Kareen, because those are the most important cards to open up with. And um, you play enough Pendulums to just to like justify the risk, because you're usually going to draw into like enough Pendulums. And um, it can conflict, you can be unlucky if you draw into Upstart or Lizard Draw, because you cannot draw cards for the rest of the turn. And it's really risky against Monarchs, you always side it out against Monarchs because after you play it they can just caress you and you can't draw cards. Um, I actually activated it zero times, I drew it once and I, I didn't activate it there because uh, I was dead. <laughs> so, yeah, there's 40 cards, uh, I really liked it, I think traps is just like, running traps is just bad because uh, the whole Ariadne trap package, the only problem is, it, like, it's only good when you go first and when you already have Sorcerer or Iris. And when you the, or which, when you win the dice roll, of which how many you won today? Uh, I won, today I won... Um, well, overall. Overall I won five or six out of uh, 14. Not very um, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, traps are only good going first, which is not a problem of this deck. This, I, 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 won, I lost one game where going first. Like, no, two actually, both in top 16. Um, every other game I, I went first, uh, I won, I think. Because the deck's just so strong. You resolve Sorcerer first, you put Kareen out, you resolve all the eyes, you have everything. The deck's really strong going first. Um, Extra deck, I guess? Yes. Uh, this boy is really good. Um, never made this. Theoretically, you can summon it off of Absolute if it dies, but you mainly send it for Odd Fusion. And Valor. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it never happened. <laughs> um, this thing also theoretically comes off of Absolute, but mainly you have to play it because it's a pendulum for Odd Fusion. Uh, Absolute, really good card. Was really really good in testing. I never summoned it this tournament, but like it's really strong against Monarchs because you make it like. Uh, because I play Pit very often, I have like Absolute and Pit, so you just make this, you attack with something small, uh, negate the attack with this by detaching Odd Eyes, you bring it back, and then you double kill Aether, and bring out this, and then you bounce the Monarch that they summoned with Aether, so you, you have 5000 damage right here with this and the other Odd Eyes, and you have a negation here, so it's like, it's really good against Monarchs. Um, this thing is... Uh, one of those cards that is very situational, but whenever you summon it, it's usually it usually wins you the game. And it's like whenever you're like 500 damage short, you know, just like put this, or even a thousand. Some decks can't work with like two activations. Um, it's basically the cowboy of this deck. Uh, I made it once against BA, who was at uh, a thousand life, and he couldn't do it. Like, how do how does BA get rid of this with without activating two cards? So, uh, big guy. N never made it, but it's, it's one of the best rank 7s. Uh, Utopia Beyond is insane against Cosmo. Uh, it's like one of the easiest way to win the game. It's just like summoning this, reducing your monster to zero, attack with Odd Eyes with 5000 damage, even without any push. Because Odd Eyes does double damage, and if you have any sort of Unicorn push, that's 8000 on the spot. Like, super good card in this deck. Um, two Dwellers, because like the deck's not very rank 4 focused, but 
Dweller is one of those cards that I do like to make blind turn one against some matchups with certain hands where I feel like maybe I don't have a strong enough defense. So I just summon Dweller and if it turns out to be Burning Abyss, they're usually going to run over it and I'm going to use you need the second one turn two. Um, so yeah, I would play that again. Uh, I, I played this over a few situational cards where like Direwolf and stuff, you could have played it, but because the deck's not very ranked for it, and you're never going to make Direwolf <laughs> turn one, so uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, this is another one of those cards, Dark Rebellion, that you're not going to make it often, but if you make it, it's usually for game because you're going to reduce something uh, to a very low amount of attack and you attack it with odd ice for double damage, and this thing's also huge, so like... The same as this is like really good against Aether and another Monarch because you can reduce one to 1400. This one beats the big Monarch and Odd-Eyes goes over the small Monarch, it's like really strong. Uh, this guy is also insane against certain matchups. Um, like against BA if they have a Dante on board because they couldn't make Beatrice, you just turn it to attack, it's 400 attack and Odd-Eyes with Phoenix push already is over 8000. Like if you have the Unicorn push with Phoenix on board, uh, that's over 8000 damage. Uh, you can hit Prime uh, with it, also down to 400. Uh, this is the card where I, I know I, I mentioned if I if I didn't have Upstart, I would have been able to beat the Monarch guy when I had four copies of Sky Iris. I would have been able to beat him because he left the Prime there, uh, because I could have done 8,200 because of that. But yeah, he had he had 9,000, so like fuck me. Um, Castell is the card that like you always make this over Direwolf anyway, so no Direwolf needed. Uh, Majester is like. Good, good generic uh, rank four for turn one. Uh, well, not generic, but in this deck it is. Um, whenever you know it's not something you want to make Dweller against, like Pendulum or anything, you just make this and just get more resources. Um, this thing for any sort of grind games where you know, because you played a Lizard Draw. Without Lizard Draw, I think I wouldn't play in another rank three. But like the Lizard Draw is just a free level three in the extra deck, and um, being able to pop like Sky Iris in main two in the mirrors is solid. Um, being able to force out strikes against any deck. Um, uh, I made it twice in like grindy games. It was decent. I was not gonna play it. I was gonna play Break Sword over it because break sword you can make OTKs with break sword because like the pendulum summon and you don't need iris anymore for the turn so you pop iris and the monster but this turned out to be better I think and then one totem bird because uh, we're playing three bonbuku because Kirin is that important so whenever you draw bonbuku and you ha already have Kirin because that does happen if you play six copies of it total um, you just can grab a second bonbuku and make the totem bird which is like decent in some matchups I made it like twice so yeah, actually it's pretty solid. I didn't miss anything either. Uh, the side deck is 3 Maxi. Uh, BA is already a really good matchup, but when you go second, uh, the, the card is insane against BA. It's like, you can take out whatever you want. Uh, like this is, this is always gonna get you one or two cards, so it's actually good for consistency, which is why I really like it. Uh, it gets you to your MSTs and stuff, because you can only play so many MSTs without uh, clogging. You know? Shoutouts to Yaksha. Shoutouts to Yaksha. We we're gonna play Yaksha, yeah. Um, two Ghost Ogre. I should have played three, I think. Um, it's insane. Like, people underestimated, I, I think, how big Pendulum was gonna be because I played four or five Pendulums total. And, uh, like, this card is absolutely nuts against everything that relies on Sky Iris. Uh, Abductor, Monkey Board, stuff like that. Like, really, really good card. Uh, I was playing three, but I caught one for another card, um, which is also good against Pendulum, but, like, yeah. Uh, two Kaiko is amazing against Monarchs. Um, it's like one of those cards that whenever you draw it with a decent hand, it just makes the game so much easier because it eliminates Stormforth, Prime, and Ether, which is like everything you need to worry about. Um, you're not going to be hardcore and play three, in my opinion, because um, it is not good with every hand. You need sometimes you need to normal summon your Bunbuku. You might, sometimes you need to normal summon your Joker, and um, Sometimes they use Ether before you Pendulum Summon because they want to pop like your scales or something, I don't know. Um, it's a really good card though, like I don't think there's a reason to play 3 because you don't need to necessarily open it. Like whenever you draw it and you you have scales, you're just gonna win. Uh, Denko, two Denkos, um, mainly for all Demise decks. Uh, I'm not siding it against Burning Abyss because they have Farfar, I think it's not worth. Um, but like it's really good against every sort of Demise deck because it eliminates Strike. Uh, it doesn't eliminate uh, Fragrance, which is, which is a huge deal, which is why I didn't play 3. Um, it's not as auto-win if you have to rely on them not having Fragrance. Uh, so yeah, here's the card that I played instead of a third Ghost Ogre. I played two Spell Sharing Arrows, 
which it was decent, but I think I should have played three of a Ghost Ogre and maybe one one of this or a Pendulum Storm. Um, because like this is only really good going first, while this is really good going second, and going second is definitely more of an issue. Um, I do cite these also against Domain Monarch because they, they're just better than MST against Domain Monarch actually because they kill Domain and they kill Return and they deal damage so uh, they're definitely decent but I would have preferred three of this and one of this for sure. Uh, two Twin Twisters is a card that I initially didn't like because like it was one of those cards that you cite because you cannot cite more than you cannot play more than three MSTs like I would play four, five, six MSTs if I could because of Fragrance. Um, but you can't, so you played. I, I, I didn't like this because BA was one of those decks that typically it had one face down. It was that that one fragrance that they were citing. You know, they're playing three fragrance and nothing else usually. But now that every like the the, the trend for the deck is pretty much uh, maining strikes and fragrance already and citing to three copies of each um, and playing fog blades. Um, you're typically gonna have you're gonna face two back row. Like I think the average might even be two considering that they can search uh, Folk Blade a lot of the time. So I, I actually really like this card and I ended up cutting Decrease from the side simply because I felt like this was also good against Demise and I, BA is just more of a problem. Uh, third MST, yeah. And then this card which won me like four games against Monarchs. Um, it's, it's insane. Like, people, a lot of people are suggesting maining it. Uh, I just don't think it's worth because you have to know the matchup to go for it. Like it's such an overcommitment in, against a matchup you don't know um, that I think you should you should you should be citing it. If you know you go first against Monarchs, and um, yeah, then you, you you have to play. It's like super good. Like four four games straight where you open terraforming and go Kirin or Apex and just like, this game's over. So yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, any uh, final comments uh, about your matches? I mean, or? All right, so, Swiss, first day I went 8-0, winning three dice rolls. It's like, that's why I don't play traps, kids. Um, <laughs> so, round nine, I lost to Head Judge OTK. Um, <laughs> because like, this was game three against BA, and um, my opponent had a Beatrice and a Dante, and he activated Dark Hole and chained Beatrice, detaching Graf, which makes Graf an early trigger because he's detached as he's detached as a cost before the chain's resolving. So after all of that results, you have to make Graf chain link one if you want to activate it. <laughs> so he's, he detaches the Graf, sends the bar bar, um, chain link one, dark hole resolves, destroys the Dante, and he goes like, looks at his graveyard and goes like, okay, Dante, target this. And then he goes like Graf, and I'm like, you cannot use Graf because you already activated Dante, and Graf would have had to been chaining one. So he calls a judge and the judge says, yeah, it's correct, you cannot use Graf anymore. He appeals to the head judge and the head judge says, no, he can, he can choose however he wants, like early triggers don't exist. Um, which I do not understand how someone like that can head judge an event full of BAs, but okay. Uh, I would have won that game. Shots but, fired. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would have won that game because my opponent made a mistake, but nonetheless. Then round uh, then I lost the last round to the mice. Cosmo didn't didn't really matter. Uh, he got like the mice turn one two times, followed up by discarding Dark Destroyer and having four face downs, including Call and Cosmojo both times, which is all right. Uh, still top top 64. I beat Monarchs 2-0. Top 32. I beat BA 2-0 in the future match. It's like BA is like the, it's like a gift if you don't like break or run into fragrance. And then top 16 is like uh, is unreal. Uh, like, like I, I opened Kirin and MST game game one, and I got FTK'd by um, Eccentric, Sky Iris, Lecter, um, Face Off, which hit Lecter to make my Kirin useless. Um, Pendulum Sorcerer, which he popped the Sky Iris to grab Odd Eyes Fusion, <laughs> and two more level four pendulums. So like. Have fun, and then game two I opened. Game two I opened. Um... That's a good card. That's a good card. So game two I opened this. So I'm like, yo, nice. Um, At least you got the unicorn. Yeah, twice. So I, I, I feel I, I have a feeling that I die if I just set this because. 
They're cheering for the unicorn. <laughs> so uh, I feel like if I just set this, because he's playing so many level 4s in the Draco deck, if I just hit two level 4s maybe he can still kill me. So I, I feel like I have to go for this. Uh, he typhoons this, I play another one, he's like, oh, so lucky, I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so lucky. <laughs> um, so I go like this, and he goes to Centric, I'm like, of course. Uh, and I die. So... It must be nice, but... Yeah. Alright, final shoutouts. Uh, shoutouts to my team, shoutouts to Loli. Uh, he believed in me, I disappointed him, I'm sorry. Draw well puffer wasn't enough. <laughs> it was not enough. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll be back next year, I guess. Cool, awesome. Thank you for the Thank profile. You.